right, welcome back to my channel. A few weeks ago at Dropbox, it was Hack Week. And during Hack Week, I ended up making this cool product and I made a prototype out of it. And it was in Figma, all through Smart Animate. And a lot of people asked me, what did I use to make it? And were extremely surprised to know that it was Figma. So I thought, well, that, that could make a cool YouTube tutorial. So here we are. Um, so today it's going to be part one of a two-part series on how to become a pro at Smart Animate. I know it seems silly, it seems like a simple feature, but you can really do a lot of cool stuff with it. Part one will have kind of the basics of Smart Animate, objects coming in and out and fading in and out, which is what you probably would use Smart Animate most frequently. But sometimes you need that extra effect. And that's where we're gonna go in part two. So part two will be all about mostly masks and how to leverage masks in Figma to actually make really cool animations with Smart Animate. If that sounds interesting, stay tuned. There will be a video right after this one in this playlist where you're gonna dive deeper into how to use masks to make cool stuff animate. Let's get started. Before heading on to our screen and heading on to the tutorial, let's just have an overview of what Smart Animate even is. So when you're in Figma and you're trying to prototype something, you have various transition modes. And Smart Animate is the most recent of those. And what it basically does is it takes your initial state of an object and your final state of the same object. It makes it transition from where it is in the first frame to where it is in the second frame. And you can see how this can become interesting if the object is at zero opacity in the first frame and at 100% opacity in the second frame, the object suddenly appears. In part one, we're going to talk about change in opacity, change in size, and change in position. So with these three elements, you're gonna be able to do most of the stuff. So let's take a look and let's see how far we can go with these three things. Okay, so let's start from the finished version. So we have this frame, frame number one and frame number two. And if we click on play, let's just see what happens um, in our prototype. So there's a nice list, three different colors in this color choosing app. <laughs> we choose pale salmon. And as you see, there's a bunch of things happening at the same time here. Let's go back once. When I click, um, you will see that the text realigns and goes down here, great. The square, um, the tile, let's say, expands to full screen, all right? And then you have the heart appearing from the side, right? A couple more subtle things you'll see are these lines appearing, just fading in, and the tiles, the banana and spearmint fading out. So there you go. So let's take a look at the um, let's take a look at the file. So we're closing this up. Um, you can download this very file. You can download it. Um, I'm gonna put it in the description below. You can play with it. Uh, but basically, without giving too much away, there's a bunch of hidden elements uh, down here, and we're gonna try uh, to recreate it here in the tutorial. So let's check out how it's done. So we're gonna start from a just empty frame. I just put some of the elements here so that I don't spend time figuring out which font it is or whatever. So this is just, as you see, it's just basic groups. I don't even rename things. This is just a rectangle, corner radius, um, a drop shadow and a color, that's all it is. Then you got a text and it's all just grouped up, not even in a frame, just like this. So what we're gonna do, take this frame shaped like um, an iPhone 11, I believe. We're just gonna drag it and I'll just duplicate it by holding option. What I wanna do is now hit Command D and duplicate it at least once. Check that it's like a decent number of pixels and then hit Command D again to duplicate again. Now let's just have some, you know, fun colors here. Um, so let's just do like this and maybe make this white so that it's not 
that bad. And that's our first screen. So you would imagine, okay, this is fine. This is pretty much like this version. So now just to be extremely clear and make sure that these layers don't all mess around, let's just change the name to, I don't know, what is this color? Peach Navy. And this will become Cherry. Great. So we've got something here. What I would do instinctively is I'll just Command D on the frame, duplicate it. What do I want to have in this screen? So basically you want this element, which you're sure 100% is the same as the one you had here because you duplicated it, to become that background. But before we go into that, let's just remove some noise. We know for sure that we're not gonna need these two in our second screen. So we're just gonna delete them. What this does is Figma will not see them in the second one, so it will fade them away. There's a default, if something wasn't in the previous one and is in the second one, it will fade it in. Same if there's something in the first screen and then on the second screen there's nothing, it will fade it out automatically, which is amazing. So we're left with a much cleaner screen and what we want to do is start from the background. So I command select the background suit to um, get straight into the grouping. In case you don't know this, you just command, it just goes into selection, you see. If I don't hit command, it will select the group. So I'll just go deep into the last layer. I want it to be full screen, so let me just get rid of the corner radius. Um, let's just make it as big as we want it to be. I hold option to make it symmetrical and expand. And now I just go down to as much as I want, let's say here. It's a good practice to connect the two screens in prototype mode um, so that when you click on this, it connects to here um, and give it a try. So just select Smart Animate, keep it as it is. I usually go for Ease In and Out, but you can do whatever you prefer. And now you can just hit play and see if it works. Let's see. It gives it clickable. So what I like to do is do a bunch at a time and then test it, but you can test every, every time you move something, you can just play it back and see if it's working. So I'm just gonna move this text down here. The cool thing is that you only have to set up Smart Animate once on the animation, and every element in this screen and this screen will get moved. So you don't have to set it up for every single element, which is amazing. So let's go back to design. Um, I had in my components here um, a little like button. So we've got this group. I'm just gonna copy it and paste it here. Instinctively, again, I would probably go and put it here. So I'll just put it here. And if you play it, what do you think it will happen? You try it out. Let's go from here. You see that it kind of is already there by the time that the other animations finish, right? That's because it disappears, it, it appears in place. So we want it to slide in from the side. So how do we do that? We take this, Common C to copy it and select the frame, Common V to paste it in the same place. And what I wanna do now is because of how Figma treats frames, if I just move it out with my arrows and holding the shift um, button to just make it faster, it will still be within the same frame. So you'll see that it's still within frame one, but it's outside. And this way, when I restart this and animate this, it will move inside. Now, I don't quite like that you see the whole thing while it moves, so I'm just gonna take this and also make it 0% opacity, so it fades in while it moves. Let's see it again. All right, so you don't see that stark coming in from the side. Cool, so this is pretty much it for part one. I hope you've learned something, and this is pretty much the basics for Smart Animate in Figma. It's very, very simple, and you'll see yourself using this over and over again for all your projects. It's just so easy. Stay tuned for part two if you want to see how you can actually use this to look like a pro. We're gonna use masks all the way through in all possible forms and shapes so that you can control when things appear and how they appear. Cool, see you at the next one.